continue his work in his birthplace, Madrid. By the 1980s, um, Jose Delgado had developed technology where you needed no implants whatsoever. The only thing that you needed to do was stimulate the brain with really, really low energy density. The technology to wipe an individual's memories is just the beginning. What about restoring memories? In 2014, DARPA announced that it will be funding research into neuroprosthesis that will help people with brain trauma recover their long-term memories. While this by itself might be a noble act, technology, of course, will continue to progress. This July 2014 article from the Los Angeles Times predicts that if the effort succeeds, healthy people too may one day clamor for implantable brain gear that can turbocharge human cognition. In fact, Google's director of engineering, Ray Kurzweil, is counting on it. He predicts humans will be hybrids by the 2030s. We're starting to see more unbelievable technologies being written about and even released to the public. 3D vaccines, cochlear implants that send sounds electronically to the brain, FDA-approved bionic eyes, brain scanners successfully able to read and recreate images in our minds, and thanks to brain implantable microchips, brain-to-brain -brain verbal communication between humans has already been electronically achieved. And considering the inevitable automated workforce, it's possible that the only way for humans to remain a useful element in the future economy will be electronically enhanced bodies and minds to become part man and part robot into what some sci-fi novelists call a cyborg. So while the operators of this new technological paradigm enhance their own abilities to match their robotic counterparts, they will also be electronically enslaving the remainder of the human mind and soul. This description of present-day technology and possible future applications wouldn't be complete without mentioning the advancements in anti-aging. Dr. Aubrey de Grey is a leader in the field of gerontology. He says that the aim of his SENS Research Institute isn't to create life extension technology, but to study the problem of how our bodies become sick as we age and to solve it. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all new ancient defense herbal immunity blend crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. This is an American president. Just add puppet, then vote and repeat every four years. Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life Vitamin B12 formulation. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade, bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. I'm running for president. Everyday Americans need a champion, and I want to be that champion. I'm hitting the road to earn your vote, and I hope you'll join me on this journey. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure these sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. 
discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. D. Gray says that the aim of his work is to postpone aging, not prolong life. Longevity, however, might be one of those desirable side effects of his research. We are just a biomedical research institute. We do the same kind of research that anyone else does who is trying to develop new medicine. But of course, biomedical research is focused on the diseases and disabilities of old age. And we believe that we can indefinitely prevent those diseases with medicines that we think could be developed within the next couple of decades. A medical understanding that will keep people youthful and healthy throughout the course of their now extended lives. Dr. DeGray believes the therapy he's working on will be available to the masses. Yeah, absolutely, it's going to be for everyone. But the period when it's only available to a minority of people will be very short indeed. The reason I can be so sure about it is not because of any kind of utopian, you know, humanitarian desire. It's simply mercenary economic. It will, these therapies will pay for themselves so incredibly quickly and so astronomically that it would be economically just suicide for any country not to do this, not to front load the investment to make sure that everybody who's old enough to need these therapies will be able to get them, whether or not they can pay. Dr. DeGray's research does not currently involve experiments using implant technology, but as he explains, all technologies will eventually integrate with each other. Therefore, his research, combined with the aid of implantable tech, might actually create the eternal man. Now, we aren't doing anything with implants, so I see this as being a process of improving and developing synergy between all of these technologies, both implantable and non-implantable and making sure that they work together in tandem to actually preserve health in the way that we desire. As we put all of the different aspects of the next generation of technology together, a truly frightening world begins to emerge. A corporate machine force working the earth and its elements at the behest of a superhuman, electronically psychic and immortal social elite with no room left for ordinary humans. A scenario like this, of course, doesn't seem real at all, and yet we're almost certainly headed in that direction. We are headed toward a bizarre, anti-human future, what some elitists call the New World Order, and it's no accident. In 1940, H.G. Wells published a non-fiction book entitled The New World Order. In it, he calls for a New World Order as a way to end wars for good, even though he admits countless people will hate the New World Order and die protesting against it. Wells' prediction for a New World Order was certainly not the only one. Some writers called for a New World Order decades earlier. The thought that, well, basically mankind, not everybody was equal in mankind. Uh, no, there was an elite and there was a huge underclass that had to be steered and even exterminated if, if you know, if that needed be. Uh, we find these plans 
clearly outlined in some of the 19th century Victorian science fiction novels. In the late 19th century, science fiction novels were published like William Delisle Hayes' 300 Years Hence or A Voice from Posterity, which describes a eugenic space society wiping out complete races of people, domed cities, impressive technology, and a one-world order. Now, these books are very obscure. You rarely find them. But if you find them and if you read them, you'll be chilled to the bone because everything that happened in, in, uh, into, in Nazi Germany with the extermination of, of entire groups of people, well, in, in some of those 19th century science fiction books, we already see these blueprints neatly laid out. In the 20th century, high-ranking political and scientific disciples of occult organizations attempted to make the technology as well as the politics in these books a reality. Late 19th and early 20th century German occultist George Lanz von Liebenfels envisioned a race of enhanced superhumans with extraordinary electrical senses that can sense images and realities hidden to ordinary human beings. George Lanz von Liebenfels described a kind of a, a race of man, a god-man, equipped with uh, organs more than biological organs. They were a, a mix, say, an evolution of the biological in the sense that these were electrical organs. And uh, well, let's say where they could um, uh, envision more than we can, can see or envision with our five senses. Enhanced implantable electrical organs that control machines and read minds using only the power of thought? If it seems like this report is slipping into fantasy, check out some of these headlines. In 2002, Science Daily reported DARPA to support development of brain-machine interfaces. Singularity Hub reported in 2011, revolutionary new brain chip allows monkeys to grasp and feel objects using their thoughts. In 2013, MIT Technology Review published Samsung demos a tablet controlled by your brain. And also in 2013, CNET reports DARPA developing implant to monitor brain in real time. Forget wearable tech, embeddable implants are already here from CNN. Or future potential a brain chip is limitless after man controls robot arm with his thoughts. And in 2015, TechCrunch reported the ultimate interface is your brain. Nanotech and AI was discussed this year at the annual Bilderberg Conference. Investment Watch reports Bilderberg 2015 Agenda, former DARPA director Regina Dugan to discuss artificial intelligence. Dugan is behind the idea of an ingestible identification microchip. It seems that all of those sci-fi fantasies and ideas put forward by occultists like George Lanz von Liebenfels and others are actually materializing. This was one of the aims, the true aims, of some of these occult orders to become like a god. But you can't simply become like a god, so what you have to do is you have to enhance your body. And you can't, uh, say, uh, enhance your body solely by biological means. You can enhance your body with, uh, through electromagnetic means, or what, what we see today, which we call transhumanism. Transhumanism is a movement dedicated to the embrace of the latest technologies, with the ultimate aim being the enhanced and immortal superhuman. These new uh, things that are now at the forefront of technology and philosophy, and, and which is, um, you know, combined, we find it in transhumanism, goes back, in fact, many, many, many centuries. While Aubrey de Grey's research doesn't specifically aim to invent a life extension technology, he is still considered by many to be a leading figure in the transhumanist movement. As a movement, you know, it's really a, a, a group of advocates for technological visionaryism, so to speak. You know, we want to actually get people to think more clearly, more rationally, more intelligently about the prospect of dramatically more powerful technology, whether medical or other. Other leading figures in the transhumanist movement is Inventor, Google's Director of Engineering, and Singularity University's founder, Ray Kurzweil. Kurzweil talks about the singularity, a moment in the future when machines will achieve more intelligence than humans. In order for humans to keep up, we will have to reinvent ourselves with the help of nanobots and medical implants. Really what he's saying there is that as time goes on, uh, and as we achieve greater and greater miniaturization, especially, of various devices, 
we will have a greater and greater ability to apply, let's call it just simply non-biological solutions to various medical problems, including the problems of aging. And those non-biological solutions will 